Hey guys, it's Dan. Uh, wasn't really planning on making a video, but having some issues uploading some showdown, so you guys are gonna have to suffer with the video this week. Um, this is a league I haven't posted a lot about, but it is the VBL uh, S. This is week six. I believe we're currently sitting at three and two. Uh, a win here would pretty much lock us up for a playoff spot, especially if it's a 2-0. Uh, not technically, but pretty close. So this is an important week for me. Um, I'm going up against the Sacramento Nido Kings, coached by Camadu27, and they are sitting at 4-1 uh, and one right now, so it is a pretty big matchup for both of us. Uh, if I'm going to make a video, I might as well make a little bit of a production out of it. It's a bit late in my time, so I apologize if this isn't uh, the most high-quality thing that I've ever put out, but uh, shut Shutdown's weird with content, but I'll do my best with it. Also, surprisingly, not a stout uh, today. But yeah, uh, looking at the team preview here, it was a lot of what I expected. In fact, almost entirely. I thought there was a chance the Venusaur came, but I, I did have all six of these on my on my radar for this week, especially given how good Wishy Washy looks in Trick Room against this team. That uh, Water type monstrosity definitely had to come. I forget its name. Toxic Toxapex. Like like I said, it's late. Uh, so yeah, let's just go into it and I'll explain my thought process each turn. So looking at this lead initially, uh, I thought the Zap or the Mamoswine had a good chance to be scarfed, but looking here, there's very little doubt in my mind that the Tyrantra with Scarf here, and he's just going to be in a really good position because I don't have a great switch in for that. That'll take less than 50%, and that will outspeed my team. Uh, his play is almost always fake out the Tornadus and head smash it as well, and then that'll stop me if I fake out the Tyrantrum, and then uh, next turns I'm going to just never be able to get up Tailwind. So this is just a great lead on his part. It's pretty bad for me, so I just do as much as I can, fake out the Purloin, uh, his head smash will come in because it's pretty obvious a scarf, but he misses, so I get up tailwind, and suddenly I'm in great position this game when I had no right to be. So this next turn I protect, assuming head smash comes in again, and I just want to foul play the Tyrantrum. Just get as much damage as possible. Perlin reveals Encore, I get the foul play off. It doesn't quite do 50%. So here I decide not to sack it, I'll put in the Mesprit. Uh, foul play, I'll come in again, do a big chunk of damage. I'm sorry, I'm not great at doing post comms on showdown. I forget how quickly everything moves. Uh, but the, the thought here is try to preserve the Torn for a potential late game Tailwind. And I'm pretty sure that Mesprit tanks these hits pretty well. Uh, I also have Neo King in the back, which could potentially tank these hits, but we'll, we'll see what happens here. The Head Smash comes in and does a really big chunk, and Snarl comes out, and I don't quite die, but that will trigger my weakness policy. So with this next turn, Dazzling Gleam is pretty free under Tailwind. Uh, I think about what to target with this Live Hard because I want to make sure that the Tyrantrum is dead, but there's no world that I, I didn't see it dying, so I just get to foul play pretty freely here. Rain Dance going up makes me think that there's going to be Hurricane on the Zapdos, which there absolutely is, and Paralorn goes down as well. I lose Tailwind, and then Mamoswine plus Zapdos comes out. Now, I went back and watched some of uh, Kama Dude's uh, replays previously, and this Mamoswine's almost always carrying Ice Shard, uh, I mean, and it should. So Mesprit's on borrowed time here. I kind of just want to get a foul play off into it. And I did EV the fly part to always outspeed Zapdos, so I do get my foul play off. But Hurricane comes and kills the fly part. And it reveals that it's uh, life orb. So this is an interesting position. Uh, a double KO here probably just ends me, and I'm almost certain that uh, I shards coming into Mesprit here. I could go for a double protect, but I do feel like there's a decent chance I need Tailwind up. So uh, yeah, we'll just uh, I'll just show you guys what I did here. Uh, let me just change up that music a little bit. So I do switch in the Needle King. Uh, the Ice Shard does do over 50%, which puts it in range of another Ice Shard. But instead of uh, Tailwind, I go for the Air Slash to take it out so it's not a double KO this turn. 
and now, uh, because the Ice Shard would have been able to kill either of these things, and then Zapdos could probably clean up the other one if I had Tailwind up. Uh, if I had Tailwind up, Ice Shard always goes into Nidoking and Zapdos beats the Mesprit. But here, it's basically a 50-50 call. Nidoking can kill the Zapdos, Mesprit can two-shot the Zapdos. Zapdos will be the fastest thing if Zapdos targets the Nidoking and Nidoking protects. Mesprit wins with two Psychics. And if Zapdos targets the Mesprit and Mesprit protects, uh, Nidoking wins with an Ice Beam. But, uh, so there's really no reason for Mesprit to protect here. Because... In either situation, Zapdos. Uh, in, in either situation, Mesprit needs to protect because Nido King just kills if uh, Mesprit if he targets into Mesprit. So it's basically just calling whether or not he targets Nido King or Mesprit, and Nido King protecting or attacking uh, correctly. So I protect the Nido King. Hurricane comes into the Nido King. I get the Psychic off with the Mesprit, and I take game one this way. I'll just let it play out for the end here. Nido goes down. Mesprit kills with the Psychic. So yeah, that was game one. Uh, looking at game two, I knew my pass lead wasn't going to work because it only worked because Head Smash missed. So I wanted to play the lead differently, so I go with Nido King uh, and... I, I like this play on Camo Dude's part, uh, staying with the Tyrantrum and the Purloin, because that was that was just great to me. But now I can fake out the Purloin, not die to anything from this Tyrantrum on the Neo King, and just kill it. I almost clicked Earth Power here, but I click Ice Beam instead because uh, I want to call the Zapdos switch in, and Ice Beam still kills. But uh, Tyrantrum stays in, just goes for Psychic Fangs, which does a lot of damage, but Ice Beam will pick it up. Turn two, so I know that I'm dead to Ice Shard here. I could switch the Nido King out. I could protect the Nido King and foul play. Uh, I almost always foul play the Light Part here, and the question is, do I protect the Nido King or switch it out? So this first time I protect it, foul play, and then Snarl comes on out, and I'm completely okay with this. Ice Cold Crash puts me down to five percent. Okay, so going for that five percent. Going for the Icicle Crash uh, basically neutralized my Protect there. Made this next turn hard. Uh, you see that he encores me. Um, I was calling him to go for a Snarl instead and to Ice Shard the Lifeguard. Uh, uh, expecting me to switch out. I was calling the T to call the switch out. But uh, he didn't. He played it correctly and I'm in a bad position now. Uh, Nito's Ice. Uh, Nito's Encored. I have to switch him out practically here. So I get my Mesprit in. Rain Dance comes on up. Ice Shard into the Mesprit instead of Ice Crash into the Tornadoes. Leaves me in much better position because I get Tailwind up and I basically get a free Air Slash Dazzle uh, at some point after Encore is over. So Dazzle first. Mamos now in Air Slash range. Ice Cold Crash critting is annoying on the Mesprit because now I'm in Ice Shard range. So I, I decide to protect into what I believe to be an Ice Shard. Ice Shard comes on out. I pick up the Mammal with the Air Slash. Zapdos will kill the Tornadus, and we're into a similar position here, except I've got a turn of Tailwind. Zapdos hasn't shown Protect yet, so I just attack as if it doesn't have Protect. If it had Protect, we'd be in a different game. And it doesn't Protect. Uh, afterwards, I was told by Camodude that the Zapdos did in fact have Protect, and that was a misplay at the end of the game which is unfortunate, but uh, we, we do pick up the 2-0 this week, which is pretty big for me. Uh, to not reveal that this is just two games instead of three games, I'll just chat with you guys a little bit. But I've been having a lot of fun this season, so thank you guys for having me. Uh, the team feels really strong. Nido King, I know, was not everyone's favorite in the PRs, but it's been putting in a lot of work. And Mesprit is incredibly bulky, so... They're just two Pokemon I've enjoyed playing with, and they've been my endgame uh, a lot recently, especially this week. They looked very good. I was kind of shocked I didn't have Marowak hit the field this week, because I thought it looked really good. But otherwise, uh, things are playing pretty well. I think I've locked playoffs, or come pretty close to locking playoffs. I, a win next week would definitely do it, but sitting at 4-2 and two in a 7-week season, uh, 
I'm pretty happy so far, but uh, thanks again for having me, and uh, if I make another video, I'll see you guys again. If not, feel free to check out the rest of the videos on my channel. I do a lot of Draft League stuff, and I post most of the stuff that I'm in uh, for Wi-Fi Leagues, and I'll have some good Scarlet and Violet content coming out, too. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.